Hey guys, <laughs> like a deer in the headlights, you caught me. Well, I'm glad you, yeah? Welcome. Um, I was just busy marking up the, you know what? Actually, instead of me telling you, let me just show you. Today we're gonna be recording the Alright, so here we are, we're at the Grand Piano. This is a Steinway & Sons 5'9 Mini Grand. It's a beautiful instrument, I've had it for a few years now and I really love recording it. However, it was quite tricky to figure out how to mark this piano up because I tried every technique in the book and nothing worked. So eventually, we, eventually I sort of came up with my own technique and that technique is I've got a stereo pair of 414s here, AKG 414s, set to Cardroid, and uh, the one is pointing directly down to the hole which lies in between the small bridge and the large bridge of the piano to capture the bulk of the low end of this grand piano. Although some of the, high will, some of the highs will spill over into this microphone, that's fine because it's a stereo pair and ultimately we want these two microphones to work together. The next position I've got over here is the AKG 414 again. It's a stereo pair also set to Cardroid and I've got it over the second sound hole. And I just found that that's where the bulk of the sound of this instrument comes out. Right over there for the lows and right over here for the highs. I think it's important to note that when you are marking up a grand piano or an instrument this big where so much sound comes out of, you should use your ears Put your ears down to the piano, have a listen when someone's playing and figure out where the bulk of the sound is coming out. And you can direct the capsule of your mic towards that sound and you can get creative and you can really customize it to what you are looking for. This configuration gives me a really tight piano sound and what I've done is I've got a stereo set of warm audio U47 juniors in the room to give me a little bit of ambience. I also prefer to record this piano with the lid open completely, uh, preferably taken off the piano, but for now it is just open up on the side there because I do not like the resonance and the slap that happens off the wood when the lid is in that semi-open position. I think we should play some piano, play a little part or something so that we can actually head into the control room and have a listen to what this configuration sounds like. And you guys can decide if you enjoy this marking technique, but ultimately a grand piano or a mini grand piano is a very interesting instrument to mark up and there are many, many ways to do it. This is just my personal way. Let's go make some music and go and have a listen to what this thing sounds like. All right, let's go and head on to the, let's take these off first. <laughs> All right, let's go and head on to the control room and have a listen and see what that sounds like. All right, so yeah, we are. Let's get into the project and have a listen. Cool. So over there, we got the piano type, which is the two 414s, that's a stereo channel. Those 414s were going through a, well, through a set of Chandler Germ 500s. Those are awesome. Awesome preamps. If you haven't heard of them before, you can, it's got this fat knob. You just switch this fat knob and it just fattens everything up. So I love running my close marks, the 414s, right through those preamps because it just sounds awesome. Let's have a listen to the, the tight 414s on their own and see what that sounds like.
that sounds really really nice and that is completely dry no EQ and no EQ or compression going in I am going to show you in a little bit what I would sort of do to that piano in a mix it all depends on what's happening with the backtrack but I've got a rough little little chain that I've set up but let's jump to the room mics and just have a quick listen to what the warm audio U47 juniors sound like on their own and then we'll have a listen to a blend of the two pairs um, the warm audios went through a set of API 512C preamps let's have a listen So you can hear right there that those, I'm just going to lift the gain a bit here. So you can hear right there that they're not as direct as the tight mics, the four and fours that went through the Chandlers. Let's open both these channels together and have a listen to what they sound like together. And then while it is playing, I'm going to mute and unmute the room mics so that you can have a listen to the difference that those room mics actually do add to the piano. So you can hear those room mics are really just adding a vibe to that piano. Um, and what I would often do in the scenario of using room mics with my grand piano is I would generally send some reverb to that channel. And what I've done here is I've assigned a room verb and I've sent a little bit to that channel. Let's just have a listen to what that verb sounds like with the room mics on their own. So basically that is just expanding the size of the room and then I blend that in to my tight 4 and 4 mics to taste to sort of create the space I would like on the piano. So I don't actually apply reverb to the 414s, I keep them pretty dry. I do however apply compression, stereo imaging and a bit of EQ which we're going to get to in a second. Let me play this with these room mics where I've expanded the room and I'll blend it in to the dry 414s and we can have a listen to what that sounds like. So you can, yeah, it just basically expands the size of the piano and it makes it feel like it is in a slightly bigger room without losing the attack and that really direct sound that is coming from the hole and the bridge that I explained earlier. Let's have a look at those four and fours and see what sort of treatments I would typically do in this scenario. So I've got a SSL channel strip over here which I've just opened up and I've done a little high pass over there at 20 hertz. I've bumped the highs by about 7 dB at 8 kilohertz. I've then bumped the highs again by another 7 dB at to be exact 3.8 kilohertz. I have reduced by 2.6 dB in the mid range, the lower mids and I've bumped a bit in the lows around about to be exact 312 hertz. Let's have a listen to that with a bit of compression. I'm actually just using the SSL compression, compressor here. Yeah? I've set the attack to fast to make sure that I'm grabbing all those transients that are happening. The ratio is at 4.6 and the threshold is at minus 10.4 with a sort of medium to slow release because you want to make sure that the piano really just rolls out. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like with everything open, this EQ. And once again, this would typically change depending on which song I'm working on and sometimes the marking technique also changes and I'm sure in future videos I'll get to that and show you a few more techniques that I use. But let's AB this channel strip on the piano and have a listen.
So that's a typical pop piano that I would do there. Very compressed, all the transients are getting compressed and the attack is quite fast, which is making sure it is all going through the, the compressor. Then lastly, I mean, I would do quite a bit more to this in a general scenario, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just looking at a channel strip and I would use different compressors. I'd probably use an 11, 1176 or a UAD Fairchild. Um, on a piano. I really enjoy the UAD Fairchild. It has got a fantastic release and it works beautifully for grand pianos. The next thing I did here is I just added a slight stereo image to bring it out a bit on the sides because it is a stereo file. So let's have a listen to that with some AB of me activating and deactivating the stereo imager. And that's it, the Waves S1 image is just bringing it out the sides a little bit. Well, that's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Ring the little bell for instant notifications. And more importantly, please leave a comment below for the algorithm. I just want to say thank you guys for the support so far. It's been really awesome. We are having a fantastic time making these videos. Until next time, folks, you have yourselves a fantastic week and we'll see you soon. Peace.